I've been wanting to try gouache paints for a while and when I saw them 40% off at the bookstore, I got them. So let's see how they compare to watercolors. And maybe it will help you figure out whether you want to try out gouache as well. I had been eyeing the art supplies at this cash station bookstore and when I saw they had a closing sale, I decided it was my chance to try out gouache. The original price was 7 euros and the reduced price was around 4 euros. When you open the set, it looks like a kid's watercolor set, which I guess goes with the price. And checking online afterwards, the brand is indeed marketed as kids' art supplies. I'm continuing my parrot painting series with an autumn theme, with the bird sitting on pumpkins. I'm doing two paintings, one with the new gouache set, and the other with my Winsor & Newton Cotman watercolor set. I wanted a similar color scheme for both, so it's easier to compare. So even though I'm doing different parrot species, I chose ones that are about the same colors. I sketched them using the grid method to get the proportions right. And the parrot photos are old ones I took at the botanical park in Madeira like 10 years ago. I transferred the sketches onto watercolor paper using graphite transfer paper. And I used a colored pencil for transferring the first one and the lines turned out dark and thick. So I had to erase some of them so that they wouldn't show up too much through the painting or smudge the paint. A light pencil worked out better for the other sketch. I want to paint all parrot species eventually, or the most common ones anyway. So I found two new ones I haven't painted before from my old photos for this. The watercolor painting is a ring neck parrot. They look like they have a black ring around the neck. And the gouache painting is of a Nande conya, also called Nande parakeet or black hooded parakeet. In hindsight, I probably should have started by painting the background, but I started with the pumpkin and the leaves, cause I guess they were calling to be painted first. The gouache feels like very opaque watercolor paint. Like if we cut to the watercolor painting, I made a yellow wash for the background and added some wet on wet for some colors and texture. And I did layering for the pumpkin and the leaves on top of the background. And the colors are translucent and spreading and blending together. Whereas with the gouache, I'm trying to use as little water as possible. Just enough that the paint flows, but no more than that. I tried mixing them on the wells on the cover of the palette. Not sure if that's how you're meant to do it or not. And then I got bored and started mixing them straight on the pans instead. And they were a little annoying to clean when I wanted to use the actual color underneath the mix. Gouache does reactivate with water after it's dry. So when I painted yellow next to the black, the black started bleeding into the yellow. Uh, maybe the black was a bit too wet still for painting right next to it. I used reds, yellows and browns for the leaves in the background for both paintings. I even tried white on the gouache painting. And gouache is supposed to be opaque like acrylic paint. So you can paint from dark to light instead of painting from light to dark like you have to do with watercolor, since watercolor is translucent and you can't cover dark watercolor with lighter watercolor. But the white gouache wasn't as opaque as I was hoping. So working from dark to light doesn't necessarily work that well. I did accidentally go too far by adding green shading on the pumpkin and that showed up pretty well on top of the brown. But the white needs some layering to achieve actual white on top of a dark layer. I was going to title this video trying gouache painting for the first time, but I'm realizing I probably have used gouache before. IKEA sells these smaller paints in little bottles that when I first made a video using them, I thought they were acrylics and then I noticed that they react to water even after drying, so they're not acrylics. And I'm now assuming they might be some type of gouache. It's opaque like acrylics, but reacts with water after drying like watercolor. 
And this set is pan gouache, which is a different type of gouache from the bottled one. And then there are tube gouache paints, which are supposed to be the more superior type of gouache. I actually do have gouache tempera paint tubes from when I was a kid, but those are all dried up now. But maybe I should see if I can revive those for a future video. But either way, this might be my first time trying pan gouache that I remember of anyway. And then there's the new jelly gouache, which looks appealing, but I've never tried. For some reason, I always struggle with painting feathers and parrots, and I feel like I need to reinvent the wheel every time, when instead I should maybe just check how I did it in some of the older paintings. Trying to fix and paint over the feathers with gouache didn't work so well, so clearly what I would do with watercolor didn't really translate the gouache here. The eyes weren't that clear in my reference photos, especially in the Nande Konya photo, so I had to find higher quality photos for the eyes, and I ended up redoing the eyes in both paintings. It was a struggle for the watercolor painting, but a lot easier for the gouache painting because I could actually add white to the eyes if I layered enough. I enjoyed how gouache was like a more saturated watercolor, but it also created some issues, so in the future for paintings like this, I might want to combine watercolor and gouache by doing this bright solid color background with gouache, paint the bird with watercolor, and then add some white or bright details on top with gouache. But what if you try making a whole painting with watercolor pencils? I compared them to normal watercolors in this video here. See you there!